Hi, I'm Anke. And I'm Dave. So we're trying out a whole bunch of ideas. Um, over the years, we collected tips and tricks and thought, man, that would be great. So now we're doing it all in a small space all at once, and we don't know how it's going to work, but here we go. We, we want synergy in those combinations so that the, the combination is greater than the sum of its parts. That's what we're shooting for. But we're going to try it out. Come with us. The vessel is divided by the midship's bulkhead into cockpit and cabin sections. Seems like a reasonable division for looking at the outfit. We keep the forward locker pretty lightly loaded, with items handy to the cockpit. Two long seat lockers help distribute weight for trim. These simple, easy-to-make wooden dogs use paracord for tension. They are basically an offset lever, held in place by the tension of the paracord. The aft locker hatch is flush with the deck. People ask us what the hay these are. Answer, freeing ports. In case of swamping, we can quickly drain half the cockpit's volume. Skiff plugs for draining rainwater when stored ashore. We prefer an oversized, self-launching anchor ready to drop at any time. Drop, secure, and raise are quick and straightforward. We indulge in this extra maneuver to clear the lean bank of chain for lounging. Our 15 pounder is next up with a 25 in reserve. Nord hills are decent in all bottoms and stow flat. And our onboard tractor and depth sounder. Along the spacered outwale, we've got several accessories plugged in. There's the forward oar station, the board hanger, the whip staff, the after oar station, and cleat post. Control lines lead aft via HMD fair leads fixed on the whale and at the aft quarters. Any accessory can be repositioned along the whale as needed. A relaxed bungee has the tiller hard over the whip staff stretches it hard the other way. We've used this system on vessels up to six tons. To lower the rudder blade, engage the hook downhaul. It bends open on hard impact, sparing the rudder. Our thole pins are spruce with polypropylene grommets, beachcomb materials that float. Sliding seeds at leg power. Lower foot positions is easy on hips. Narrow blades catch less wind in backwater. The shouldered side shrugs weed. The hook side grabs what needs grabbing. I built these double action seed prototypes from scrap. They have no bearings to fail from sea salt. The upper seat rolls on captured axles. The lower carriage holds the axles parallel. Hatch cleats guide the wheels. Snap fits keeps it all together when stowing. Seat racers roll on the axle tops, which travel with the wheels. Double action. The boards are shaped to make a cockpit platform for sleep, work, or play.
Flaps keep wind, rain and bugs out and heat in. We first saw a telescoping rain shelter at an open-air restaurant in Italy. They're perfect as hatches for the long, open-ended birdwatcher gangway. Note the double tracks and light construction. The solar panel mounts are simple and allow some orientation. A lanyard protects wiring that must move with the hatch. Bronze bolts conduct power inward. Down the road we may manage a more elegant conduit. Our output is designed for 5 volt DC USB charging. Lights are dry cell saving wiring. All else has onboard battery capacity which we count toward total capacity. USB charge devices feel revolutionary for small craft electrical systems. Our rocket stove is long in the tooth after six years frequent use. The grate under the stove enables cooling airflow. This cantilevered hood hinges up and down over the stovetop and directs leftover fumes outboard. As a perk, it increases the cooking surface. Rocket stoves push exhaust with thermal expansion, so a short stovepipe works well. So far so good. Each component has survived the leap from paper to physical being, and it all looks promising. But there are many tests that yet lie ahead. We've separated out the outfit from the rig, which we'll see in the next part. But then we had sea trials and we'll have a better idea how it all looks.